Well, today I uh, have the opportunity to meet with Don Hendricks and Mayla Morgan with uh, Clackamas Community College. Uh, I know that our directors at the Willamette Valley Wine Foundation are familiar that we've developed a consortium. We call it the Latino uh, Early Childhood Education and Care Consortium that's focused on developing best in class uh, early childhood education and care in the mid Willamette Valley. And uh, one aspect of this is developing the uh, workforce. And we've had a great partnership with Clackamas Community College for a while. And to kick this off, I'm just gonna ask Don and uh, Mayla to introduce themselves uh, and uh, tell us a little bit about Clackamas Community College. Great, thank you, Mike. We're happy to be here. I'm Dawn Hendricks. I am the Early Childhood Education and Family Studies faculty member at Clackamas Community College and the program lead. In that role, I oversee both our English Early Childhood Education degree and certificate program, as well as our new Spanish language Early Childhood Education and Family Studies certificate and degree program. And my wonderful colleague, Mela, is here as well. Hi, my name is Mela Morgan. My title is the Teaching and Learning Outreach Navigator. Um, it's a bilingual position, and I work specifically with all of our students in the education program. So this includes students going through their teaching licensure pathway and the early childhood education programs, both in English and Spanish. Um, a lot of my time is dedicated towards working directly with the students in the Spanish ECE program. And I really fill those gaps for students navigating the college system and connecting them with the resources we have available. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, ladies. Um, I wanted to start out before we dive into the uh, um, actual degree programs to just have you describe a little bit how you've worked in the Mid Willamette Valley with our Latino community with what we call community based training for early childhood education and care providers? Our relationship and connection with the child care resource and referral in the mid Willamette Valley area um, has been going on for many years. I started providing courses in early childhood community-based trainings in Spanish, gosh, probably nine, 10 years ago uh, with the partnership of Shannon. Uh, we del delivered on-site uh, early childhood Spanish uh, trainings and eventually coursework at the community action organization there in Salem and then also at sites in Woodburn. And it really is because of that initial partnership, that initial collaboration around providing Spanish community-based trainings that it really grew into what we now have as our full-fledged uh, certificate and associate's degree program. So what we, where we're at now is really a culmination of those early partnerships uh, with our partners and Marion Polk. And I'll let Mela talk a little bit about the current cohort uh, that we've been partnering um, on for the past year. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, whenever we talk about the Spanish program, I always bring up that we didn't just create it out of thin air. It was really created based off of those connections we had with our community partners and the need we were seeing. So this year, we have a cohort going down in Salem um, that is providing students with the opportunity to receive the full one-year certificate in Spanish. So students are taking three courses per term, completely funded. Um, and they are doing those after their work. So they're able to work throughout the day and then they take the courses online in the evening via Zoom. Um, it's been a really great turnout and students are really excited about the opportunity. We know it's a lot of work for them to do it on top of their normal job, um, but it's been wonderful to work directly with the students and see their excitement about having this program for their Thank you, Mila. Uh, um... I don't want to get into too much detail on this, but actually, once they get that one year certificate, they actually uh, can register within a program within Oregon, the Oregon registry that moves them up all the way to level seven in the Oregon registry, which gives them certain capabilities within the, uh, the state. Isn't that correct? Exactly. I'm impressed, Mike, that you're familiar with our registry system and that career lattice network that we have in place. But yes, that one year certificate, um, actually I believe it puts them at nearly a level eight now. And then after they complete the one year certificate, the one year certificate 
forms the foundation for our two-year certificate. So we consider that what we call stackable, that they can do the one-year certificate and then they simply go on to that second year of coursework and then they'll have their associates of applied science degree in early childhood education family studies. And so it's our hope that our current cohort, once they achieve their certificate in June, which is very exciting, will decide to continue on and pursue their associate's degree. Well, why don't you talk more about your applied, your associate in applied science in early education and the family studies? Great, thank you. Um, so we developed this program uh, initially as kind of like one course here, one course there, Mela said, and then uh, we had an opportunity back in January of 2021 through a grant called the Grow Your Own Grant through Department of Education to develop the entire program in Spanish. After several years of just, you know, providing one course here and there, I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we could put our entire degree into Spanish? So through our winter and spring term of 2021, we developed all of our courses in early childhood in Spanish. And we also worked with our uh, collaborating faculty across the college to also develop and offer the math course requirement in Spanish, the writing course requirement in Spanish, our first year experience course, which is what we call, it's like our college success course, which we know is pivotal to really helping first generation college students be successful. So all of the courses, not just the early childhood courses, are fully available in Spanish. We begun implementation of the Associates of Applied Science degree in Spanish in fall of 2021 and just had an overwhelming response from the community. Um, during our first year, we had 112 students enroll in the program. And we are now close to 200 students in the program as we approach the end of our second year. As we developed the program, we, we really looked at how we could eliminate barriers for students. You know, the first barrier we wanted to eliminate was the barrier of not speaking English. We wanted our Spanish speaking Latinx providers to be able to take college courses in their home language. So everything is available in Spanish. We also looked at the barrier of accessibility. We know that most of our early learning providers work on, in the field already, either as family child care providers or classroom assistants. So we decided to offer the courses all online in a remote format, and they do meet uh, asynchronous and they do meet synchronously via Zoom every other week. And those synchronous sessions are in the evenings from six to eight. Again, keeping in mind that most of our students are oftentimes already working, you know, ten hours a day. Um, so the class sessions are in the evenings or on Saturday mornings. We also eliminated the barrier of having to purchase textbooks. We either identified what we call open education resource textbooks that are free, and we're able to pull those directly into the courses, um, or we linked into existing articles, websites, videos. So that way the students have all the information and that they need for the course at their fingertips. They don't have to purchase a book. They don't have to you know, drag a hard copy book around with them. They have everything they need embedded into the course. And then we also set up other supports, such as Mela, the bilingual navigator, to offer students additional supports they need to be successful. Mela, do you want to hop in there and talk about some of the supports that you provide to students? Yeah, so I would say the biggest support that I provide to the students is just being a resource for them to go to when maybe they're not sure where else to go. The college system can be tricky, and even our website is pretty much completely in English. So even if there are resources out there, they might not know where to find them. Often I'm helping students log into their online portal. Um, I'll help them apply and even search for scholarships. I'll connect them to our bilingual um, tutor. I'll connect them to our financial aid office, our academic advisor, and our great support team. So really just having somewhere, someone to go to, someone to email when they're not sure who to reach out to is the biggest form of support that I provide. Mela, could you talk more about the peer mentors and the peer tutors that you have available? Yeah, so this is going to be new this year um, that we have students who are looking at finishing their two-year degree are excited and willing to come back and provide peer tutoring services to students in their first year of the degree. So these students are going to receive um, stipends, I believe, for their time working with the students and providing them that guidance and being that person for them who's already been through it, 
and can be an inspiration to the students going to their first year. I know Dawn's been working with them more directly, so she might have something to add. Yeah, we've, we've had a peer tutor, one peer tutor, um, and that peer tutor has been kept very busy um, helping students with coursework, revise and edit papers, helping provide math support. And so because that peer tutor has been so instrumental, we are going to be pulling on what we call, you know, the peer mentors. So starting in spring, we'll have peer mentors who are available not just for tutoring, but just for that support of, gosh, how do I balance work and life and school? Or, you know, how do I, you know, take notes and how do I make sure I remember all this? And so we're really looking at providing those, not just the academic supports, but sometimes just those social emotional supports that the students need also to be successful and to persist and continue down that degree path. Great program, great program. Well, we were working, the, the consortium, our early learning and um, education consortium has been working with the Department of Early Learning and Care for scholarships for a while, talking to John Reeves and his department. And then all of a sudden, early uh, a couple months ago, and I've been that long, I think, they dropped this intergovernmental grant on us and said, here's a group of scholarships you can apply for, but you need a partnership with a community college to do it. Could you talk about how we developed this partnership with you? Yes, definitely. I was thrilled when uh, you and the Latino consortium that you'd already developed over the past year reached out to partner with us. So the partnership that we now have in place as of two months ago, again, it's all very new, um, is a partnership with Clackamas Community College as the lead. And then we have our Marion Polk and Yamhill partners, and then also our Washington County partners. Because we are the only community college that has an early childhood degree program in Spanish in the state, and I, one of only two in the country, we've had a lot of our partners from various counties outside of Plaquemines reach out to us with interest in partnering. So we were fortunate that uh, because of a lot of the work that Mike had done initially, we were able to mobilize fairly quickly, respond to the IGA, the Intergovernmental Agreement application, and we were awarded the IGA. So the objectives of the IGA that we now have is that beginning in spring term, which for us is April 3rd, we are going to have two cohorts of Spanish speaking at Latinx early childhood providers. One cohort is from the Marion Polk and Yamhill region. And the second cohort is from Washington County. Again, both of those counties being high agricultural producers and a lot of uh, Latinx Spanish speaking early childhood providers already working in the workforce there. Um, so we are able to provide a tuition and fees for two courses. We're going to start with the prenatal infant and toddler development course, and also our first year experience course, that college success course I shared with you about earlier. And um, so this, and provide the peer mentors, the bilingual navigation support, so that those students, that those cohort of students will be able to successfully complete those two courses. Additionally, the, uh, there's going to be another opportunity for funding for the uh, recipients of the IGA. There's going to be a RFA that comes out in April, and we are going to apply for that. And the RFA will go for two years. And our goal with the RFA is that then we will continue to support these cohorts of these uh, two cohorts of students through completion of their associate's degree in applied science and early childhood education and family studies. It was amazing when I learned about your program, how well it fits with what the objective of our consortiums are. Well, it's wonderful that we have the uh, public money, the scholarship money coming from the Department of Early Learning and Care. How about private funds? Uh, how can the Willamette Valley Wine Foundation best support you and your students um, moving forward to develop more, more early educators? Malik, since you work so closely with the students, do you want to talk about some of the needs that you've seen or that the students have shared with you? Yeah, so students are absolutely thrilled with the opportunity to receive their school tuition and fees have being paid for, but there's still the whole question of living expenses. A lot of these students are working full time, going to class, and don't have the opportunity to make a lot of money in their position, whether they need that extra education to take the next step we're just not there yet. So a lot of these students are facing needs, whether it's their rent, their bills, 
Um, a lot of students face technology needs. We have students that are completing their entire coursework from their phone because they don't have a laptop. A lot of students don't have internet at their house, so they're staying late at work in order to do their homework there and then driving home at 8 p.m. at night. So it's really those extra expenses that they just don't have the extra funds for that make a huge difference for students when they're trying to complete the degree. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, thank you both for uh, the time you've given us and uh, the, the value information, valuable information. And we will be talking to our, our directors of our foundation about how we can help support some of those students with some of those areas, Mela. Thank you very much, Mela. Thank you very much, Dawn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. It was a pleasure being here with you and having the opportunity to share about our program.